Hey everyone, it's Popcorn's Kids. We're a channel made by NYU students to educate and entertain those that stuck at home currently during this time. We know it might be a scary time right now with not being able to go out and see your friends maybe. You're kind of stuck at home for long periods of time together. But this is an important time to remember to stay safe, stay healthy, so that we can go back outside soon enough. Remember to always wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. And be sure to spend time with loved ones. They need you, and they're fun. <laughs> this week, we're going to have my friend Sherman teach us about Indian classic music and his instrument, the sitar. And today I will be talking about this extremely beautiful instrument that I'm holding here right now. It's called a sitar. And as you can see, it has a very unique appearance to it. It's very beautiful, very majestic, very uh, traditional looking. So it's an Indian classical instrument. It was made in India many centuries back. After that, it went through countless number of modifications. And now it looks something like this. So today I just want to briefly talk about how we go about doing music on this extremely beautiful instrument. But before that, I just want to talk a little bit about the external aspect of it. So, there are six external strings, which I'm kind of holding here right now. And right beneath that, we have a lot of sympathetic strings, which we call tarofs, and we can kind of strum them occasionally. And, and, and the role of the tharo strings, or the sympathetic strings, is that they resonate when we, when we kind of play notes over here. Uh, so it kind of adds to the overall flair of the musical presentation. So how do we go about doing music on this instrument? Well, Indian classical music uh, is, is one of the most dynamic forms of music out, out there. And there's so many opportunities for improvisation and spontaneity and things like that. But there are rules that we have to abide by. And, and the rules are basically the rules of the raga that we're playing. Now, what is a raga? A raga is basically a melodic form. And at the backbone of the raga, there is a scale. Um, so I'm going to give a very brief presentation of a raga, a fundamental raga called Rag Yaman, and, and the scale for that goes something like this. So that's the scale for Rag Yaman. But now raga is not just the scale, it's how you creatively embrace that scale, you know, how, how you play around with the notes. Usually you're not really allowed to go beyond the notes of the scale. Some ragas you can, in Yaman you cannot usually. Um, but even within the scale, there's so many ways you can kind of creatively play around with the notes. So it's all about how you elaborate the scale and make the scale your own. That's the beauty of the depiction of a raga. So one of the things we do in Indian classical music to kind of uh, depict a raga is we start off with something called an alap. So what is an alap? An alap is basically, well, it has no rhythm. And uh, in, in an alap, uh, what we do is we kind of slowly, creatively, we unveil the raga. We kind of... Uh, open like a gateway leading into the rag using like very slow and deliberate phrases and and in sitar one of the really cool things is that we can kind of pull the string uh, so we try to emulate the human voice as much as we can so instead of doing we can do so we can kind of pull the string and it's a very unique characteristic of this instrument which makes this one of the most beautiful instruments out there uh, so an alap in rag yaman can go something like this.
that. So we can also play some rhythmic phrases as well on the sitar to kind of further unveil the rock. some faster phrases as well, which we call thons. Kind of usually how we end the depiction of a raga is we kind of do something called a chala and the basic uh, format of a chala is that we kind of do this um, do this movement over here and it usually sounds something like this something like this. So that's a little bit of a demonstration of how we go about portraying music on this extremely beautiful instrument, sitar. Uh, I just want to say that music is one of the very few things out there that really kind of transports you to a completely different domain. See, I'm an economics and math major myself. I, I love numbers and I deal with a lot of numbers and I love my major, it's great. But music is something I seek for solace. It's my refuge. Whenever I feel like all the pressures in the world are kind of like coming down, upon me, whether it's in, in college or any other aspect of my life, I really seek to music. Music becomes my best friend. It, it's, it's my source of respite. And so I encourage all of you out there to pursue some sort of a musical form, some sort of a creative form, um, despite your academic obligations. You know, we all have obligations out there, uh, but despite any academic obligations or any obligations that you may have, I think it's very important to pursue uh, music or some sort of creative form and really allow music to inspire you. Um, it's a challenging journey, no doubt about it, um, but it's also one of the most beautiful things out there. Um, so I, I really encourage all of you to give music a chance to inspire you, and it's a great way to channel your emotions, uh, and it can end up being one of the most inspirational and motivational journeys of your life. So thank you all so much for your time, and hopefully this gave you some sort of an insight into the world of Indian music and sitar. I wish you guys all the best in everything you do. See ya. Wasn't that cool? Sherman taught us so much about the sitar and his music, so beautiful, so relaxing. Now, my friend Malady is gonna come from France and teach us some French words. Ooh la la. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Melody and I'm tuning in from France. Today I'm gonna teach you a couple of French words. Since spring is coming, I'm gonna teach you a couple of spring-related words. Let's start with how to say sun. 
So, sun is said soleil. Let's try it. Soleil. Soleil. The lay might be a little different, difficult, but I believe in you. Okay, try it with me. Soleil. Great. Good on you. So, our second word is going to be hot. Okay? So, shu. Shu. Say it with me. Shu. Great, look at you, you're basically a native. Next word is how to say sky. So the word is ciel. Ciel. Say it with me. Ciel. Good on you, look at you. Then uh, let's learn how to say flowers. Fleur. Fleur. That's how you say those pretty little flowers that are going to start springing up everywhere. Then, let's go a little uh, exciting. What goes on our beautiful flowers that are now growing? Butterflies. Papillon. 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 Look at that. You got it. So now, let's mix things up a bit. And let's say that our beautiful butterfly is actually blue. So, our papillon is bleu. Un papillon bleu. Look at that! You were able to describe this whole photo. Look at that! Un papillon bleu. Awesome. Thank you so much for tuning in and learning a couple of French words. I hope that you enjoyed this. If you did, please comment below some words that you would like to learn next uh, for our next episode. Um, but first, Let's go through those words one more time, just to test you. So, sun is soleil. Hot is chaud. Yeah, you got it. Ciel is how you say sky. Flowers, fleur. Butterfly, papillon. And what color is that butterfly? It's blue. Thank you so much. Bye. That was some exciting French words. Merci, Melody. I hope you enjoyed our video this week on Pop Course Kids. Tune in next time to learn more about ancient Mesopotamia and some stories. Thanks for watching.